South Tyneside covers an area of about 20 square miles. In the past, the inhabitants of towns such as South Shields, Hebburn and Jarrow could seek employment in the local shipyards and coal mines. But times have changed and the traditional industries have closed down or moved away. By any yardstick, the area is now home to some of the most economically and socially disadvantaged families in Britain. It is against this backdrop that the staff of the Alternative Education Service face the challenge of providing full-time education for the young people who have been excluded from the area's mainstream schools. Can you stop the rudeness about other people? This thing is sh What, so that... I don't even want to be in it! Elizabeth Diamond Centre is a provision run by Alternative Education for pupils who are permanently excluded from school or are in danger of being so, so that the school might need some a referral for a respite place for an agreed length of time. Why should we do it, Mum? A lot of young people here have experienced quite varying degrees of challenging behaviour. They'll have had lots of problems in mainstream and the, the mainstream schools will have worked with all the strategies they can to um, try and keep the young person in school. Sean! Sean's not strictly true what you said, is it? Probably starts off as quite low level disruption, but then it, it escalates. No, I don't give a f We get young people here who have had um, lots of um, incidents of verbal aggression and also physical aggression towards staff or, or pupils. So, what? The children can come in any time from quarter to nine for a breakfast club, which is an optional thing. Um, we tend to find that they take up more in the winter than the summer. Um, it, we t see it as a, a time for social socialisation with, with teachers and support staff. We've got a lot of children here who are from quite vulnerable backgrounds, I think. We try and get them to socially interact on a positive level because a lot of the young people find that a problem. Um, so it's a time to chat, it's a time where it's just quite relaxed. I wasn't really bothered. Then on the first year I was a bit nervous coming and meeting new people and that. And they were all dead Connie. Well, why did they come here then? Um, because I was misbehaving, not doing the teachers said. Keep on running off, um, being ignorant and just my behaviour. I used to like school, sometimes I still do. Ian, put your zero and multiply by two. Two twos are... Two twos are four. And two threes are... Six. And that's your answer. So they are actually very easy, you can do these. I will. Most of the teachers, most of the kids, and some of the lessons. Because I have difficulties in math sometimes, depends on what. You learn them. Most of the time I don't know what to do. And then I end up like kicking off and end up getting sent home. You have to like learn to control your anger, control like your behaviour. And um, then once you've done that and proved it, then you can get back into mainstream school. Start all over again, really. Today, and all that, have you? Mm -hmm. oh, that's really good, isn't it? So, how's your report been since you've come back? All tens. All tens. One nine on work. Right. So you're doing really well, and you're making a big effort, aren't you? After your few difficulties that you had last week, yeah? I'm excited, really, because when I go to mainstream, I can like, go into a proper class with my level people. Not a bit like normal again. Franco dies, Fleance lives, Franco's ghost appears. A bloody captain gave King Duncan the news about the battle. Wait and say that, that one's right. in the right place. It's just a very caring place for the children. It's, I mean, my aim certainly is to make the children feel as safe as possible when they're here, to try and help them to achieve as much as they possibly can. I mean, we have some children who really, really struggle with basic literacy, reading, writing skills. And it's trying to find ways for them to access materials without sort of making them feel in any way inferior to the other pupils. Because our pupils can be um, quite nasty towards each other if they perceive a weakness. So that would go after that one, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So you could stick it there, couldn't you? What? So the sun's run away. That's what happens there. So that's number five. 
Which one have you got? Banco and Macbeth make the witches. Yeah. Tell everybody again what you just said. Which one was it? Macbeth and Banco make the witches. Well done. It's a bloody captain gives King Duncan the news about the battle. Right. Looking at the list on the right hand side, what do you think is going to be the third thing that happens? It took me a long time to become a teacher. I actually uh, worked in advertising for a while. Um, left. I had a family raised my family. And it, just, it was just picking back up again on sort of a childhood ambition, really. I come from mainstream. I've been um, in mainstream for six years. Um, wasn't really too sure what to expect when I came here. But the contrast is unbelievable. This is the fourth one. Is this a dagger I see before me? So the fourth one's on. Yeah. The first one. So working witches, in pairs. The witches are pairs. Or working by yourselves. Yes, I don't know what the witches are in pairs. It was just an absolute madhouse. I couldn't believe what I'd come into at first. And I mean, really, we only had a couple of days that first week. And I was like, oh my goodness, what on earth is this? Uh, the next week I came in and I thought, I've got to get through five more. Got to the end of the five days and I thought, I just absolutely love this. This is where I should be. And I've never looked back since. Have a look back, just, you know, I, I love being here. Mm -hmm. I'm very lucky in the fact that the support workers I have with me are excellent. Um, we have a great deal of empathy well, towards each well, other. Isn't it? We can pick so up on, sure. you know, Which just small signals that we give each other um, if we think there's a situation arising. Compassion. Compassion is extremely important. These children come from backgrounds you could hardly imagine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to imagine. And we need to be here to be a safe place for them. The Alternative Education Service consists of five separate centres. Carol Marchant is head of all five. I'm going to ask Mrs Holmes to have a more visit and speak to your mum about your back injury. It's the ability to be able to think on your feet within a second. You brought this about yourself. And if you're climbing on furniture and up, up a height, you can't have that much of a problem with your back. I spend some time on each of the sites each week and I have a senior member of staff who is in charge of that particular site who I work through. I intervene on different levels. We may have a difficult group, for example, in Year 9 and I would be involved in, with her, having parental interviews, speaking to the young people concerned. Well, we have a timeout room. Um, what we try and do is try and look at each individual child and what we would do if there's a problem. Um, there's lots of issues that we sometimes have to take into consideration. You know, there may have been a, a problem at home, there may be something quite major in that young person's life that really we have to look at it and maybe have some leniency at some points, you know. Um, because I say they do experience quite difficult times, you know, out of school and in school. You want to go back in the lesson and do what? You know, whatever Miss want to do. Right, whatever Mrs Johnson wants you to do. It's a safety net for them. They know they can come here and they can act in ways that anywhere else would be considered extremely strange, dangerous, that, you know, they would, they would be getting themselves into terrible situations. But they know they can come here and use us as, as, a, as a kicking off point. And we will tolerate it to a certain extent. I mean, obviously there's boundaries which the children know about. But we provide that for them which I think is really important in their lives because they don't have it, you know, it's not something they particularly have. Work. Stand up. Stand up. No, you can have it be, it can be any week. Well done. Anything else? I have to, I have to. I'm David Telford, I'm reintegration teacher for Alternative Education Service. Um, I'm also coordinator for uh, design technology throughout the service. I would say that we have quite a good impact on the young people because, I mean, we have reintegrated quite a few young people recently into, into mainstream schools and so far we have had none back. So I had language. French and that was Language, yeah, out. language. Language lessons, do you get French? No. They find the problems for themselves and we we'll use that as a stepping stone for the individual work we do with each young person. Um, we try and operate a reintegration group. It doesn't always work because the, the population keeps changing, the group dynamics keep changing. If you were going into school, this is. 
Mm. Yeah. From there, we try to um, identify lessons they are most comfortable in and highlight, target those days for the young person to start the reintegration process. We try and not only look for academic achievement, but we try and look for the whole person and try and help that person reach their full potential. We are struggling because we don't have any purpose-built classrooms, so we sort of adapt and apply with it where we can. Just that one small success where the young person really shines and it's, it's a boost to us and it does make it well worthwhile. Everyone has to take some responsibility. Everyone. You can only take your responsibility for bits of behaviour you came up with. You can't, you know, I'm not going to say take responsibility for, for somebody else's. It's your own. It's focusing on yourself a little bit. Types of behaviours could be refusing to work, not cooperating, um, which we deal with very, very strongly. Um, one of the things that we, we expect is respect, because I think the staff do try and give respect to the children and the young people here, and we, we do try our very best to you know put that message across quite clearly, um, because if we, get, if we have respect, you know, and they gain respect, they get respect, and vice versa. Why should I, man? Why f***ing get two points, right? We've had, had incidents of physical aggression towards staff, um, lots of verbal abuse. Well, you're not acceptable. That's probably the highest sort of thing that, that we have to deal with. Um, and just refusing to follow instructions. We know the lunchtime rules. What? Sit on a table, don't talk. Behave appropriately. What? I've always got one ear sort of on what I'm doing and one ear on sort of the outside. So if I hear some level of noise which is um, not usual, then I'll sort of go out and I'll just um, maybe listen. And uh, if I think I need to intervene, then I will go into the classroom. Doesn't make it right, does it, that you retaliate? Because you're the one who's out here now, aren't you? Right. It's different every day. It's never two days the same. It's hard work. It's very, very hard work and very demanding work. And, you know, at the end of term you go home and or at the end of the week you are physically drained. Let's focus on your own behaviour. Keep yourselves out of trouble. If somebody else has done something, let them cop the blame. So I'll only be in this group, right? So I'll only be in this group, right? Try and listen to them as much as possible. Um, Yes, sometimes the volume gets in the way of the words which have been said. Um, but yeah, if we can listen to them and find the, the underlying problems rather than the, the, dis, the behaviours they're displaying, then we have a chance of moving on from there. Education is seen as an important weapon in turning round the fortunes of the South Tyneside area, and the Alternative Education Service plays its own part. The Perth Green Pupil Referral Unit provides full-time education both academic and vocational, for permanently excluded pupils aged 14 to 16. Many of them will finish their compulsory education here. I'm Sue Wallace. I am the Deputy Head of the Alternative Education Service for South Tyneside and Head of the Perth Green Key Stage 4 Unit. On our last Ofsted, I was asked by the lead Ofsted member if I had a wish list, what would I wish for? And the first thing at the time, I said, I would wish for a classroom, I'd kill for a classroom. We have only three classrooms and they're not adequate as they are and six teaching groups, so timetabling is a nightmare and we actually don't see the young people as often as we would hope to. <laughs> Historically, I was an RE teacher, um, head of RE in Tilbury, got divorced, came back into the North East and was on supply and someone who'd been sent on contract supply couldn't handle the bad language in a pupil referral unit and I went to take over um, and that was in 1987 and I've been in pupil referral units ever since. You can stay out here and stew, sort your head out where you can go then because the alternative is you go. I'm very confrontational, um, meaning I do confront bad behaviour. Right, no, fine. Torn, torn it down because if we don't get across to the young people that 
um, what they say to adults and the way they behave is inappropriate, then we're giving them the wrong message for when they get out into the, the wide world. And of course they'll find somebody bigger than them that will be able to plant them if they tell them to go forth and multiply. So I do confront their behaviour, I make them aware that I don't like it, but what I also make them aware is that I still like them. Have a look at what is expected from you as an introduction to your piece of work. The situation that these children are in is that they have put themselves at such a disadvantage. Whether it's their own fault, behaviour, etc., is irrelevant. They are out of school and they have virtually been told that their education is over. So we do not want to disadvantage them any further than they already are. So we offer a range of national curriculum subjects, um, which mirrors a mainstream. On top of that, we offer a lot of vocational things as well. So we're doing um, a parallel set of courses so that young people can walk out with eight or nine GCSEs plus vocational qualifications, college opportunities. I think we do an awful lot for them. <laughs> Just to remind you what you're doing, if you look further down at the taskers, you need to compare two forms of media. It could be two newspaper articles, it could be a film in a newspaper, it could be a magazine, it could be the internet. It can improve the academic skills, but often enough it's just enabling a pupil to come out of the shell and, and communicate effectively, but improving the ability levels as well. Um, and also to improve the trust with teachers, because they have a bad impression of teachers. Even actually started some sentences to help you off. It's proof for them that they can show the outside world that they've achieved something and that they're not, their words that they've used, thick or um, that you know that they can achieve and it's it's for them it's their success that it's just happiness for them really what were you like as a teenager <laughs> exactly the same as these kids except having been brought up with a very strict father whom i adored and did not want to be into trouble with um i kept the things that they could possibly find out about down to a minimum so things like you are not allowed to smoke so at 14 i started smoking uh truanted from school got caught made up a lot of lies um and parents didn't find out things like that and i've got a very good memory as to what it felt like to be in my teens so i probably empathize more with these youngsters as a result they need to learn to reason and they need to learn that sometimes when you're challenging them it's not because you are being nasty to them or you want to be nasty. You simply want a change in behaviour that's got to come from them. Mugs, he's getting snapped the football. I explain to all young people, I haven't got a magic wand or magic dust. I cannot make them do anything. I can't make them work, I can't make them behave. But if we can get across to them that the behaviour brings its own rewards, as in good behaviour brings rewards, um, then it's negotiation that way have PE um, on two afternoons a week for different year groups, they're able to get rid of some of their excessive energy um, and because they're actually being involved in PE with the staff themselves, so the staff are doing the same as they do, it gives them a completely different perspective than just to have somebody blowing a whistle and telling them what to do. When the young person is referred or permanently excluded from the school, um, they come with their parent to meet himself. Um, they know they're welcome at any time, there's no appointments need to be made and they actually appreciate that and they call us by first names and, well, it's, re it's really nice. I, I like the aspect of being involved with the parents as well as the young people. I've always liked Sue because the first time when we actually came for the interview, she says, you call me um, Rockwheeler because the kids are scared of me, not me being scared of them. And I was like, well, that's excellent, you know, you do that for my thing and I'll be champion because that's, to me, I don't mind. Teachers have got discipline over the kids, that's fair enough, you go ahead and do that. We also let them know that if the young person doesn't turn up for school, we will ring them on a daily basis. That way the young person realises that they can't play a truant. I mean, he's already got one of the vocational qualifications, because you remember when he was doing that catering? photographs and everything of that. Yeah. In yeah. fact, the chair of our management committee still talks about the day when that lovely lad, who must have been trained as a waiter, mm -hmm. going round with a cloth over his arm, with a little notepad and whatever, he was an absolute star. Really good. If things are going well, we also contact parents because I think it's, it's time that the parents heard that the young person's done something good as opposed to the constant haranguing they've experienced in the past. And we also make sure that we don't have the parents think we're blaming them because I do honestly believe the young people know what they're doing and they know exactly what they're in control of. As part of their GCSE citizenship project, the Perth Green pupils have been making owl boxes at South Tyneside College. Daniel is one of the group delivering the gifts 
to the Wildfowl Trust. It's an opportunity to leave the confines of the classroom behind. Daniel obviously got expelled from mainstream school. I just don't think the teachers could control Daniel. Um, basically, he was sort of a class clown. and It's not like attention seeking way look at me, but that's Daniel. I, I mean, I know Daniel is my son. Um, but like I say, Sue's got no problems with him and none of the teachers have, but it's such a lovely son, the perfect son I could ever want, you know. They are fantastic. They are absolutely brilliant. Do you make this one yourself? Yeah. Yeah? Did it take you ages? Just to show what you mean. It's really good. You've done a really professional job there. That's fantastic. It's obviously been on courses, which I think he's done really loads for being in like alternative education. Then if he was in mainstream school, would he have been on these courses? So that's a really good advantage for Daniel because like he loves cars and you know he did want to be a mechanic when he left school. He's just done really well for himself. When you see them feeding the birds and talking amongst each other and they sort of think it's lovely, you see a different side to them and a much more relaxed and human side than you normally see in a classroom. So I think that sort of activity is really important. My name is Kerry Brash and I work for the Alternative Education Service as a pupil inclusion officer. Basically, if there's an issue with a uh, pupil's behaviour or if there's an issue with their attendance, I'll go out, I'll do the home visits. If it's been um, disclosed to me that a child is constantly um, losing their temper or that they're, they're being distracted very easily when they're in lessons, then I'll look at what agencies I can get involved to support them. When a pupil is referred to us or they've received a permanent exclusion and they actually join the service, we look at what went wrong in their last school. If it's been a behaviour issue, we'll look at implementing some support from the school mentor so that she can go in and actually do some one-to-one -one work so we can try and avoid that happening again. Liam, I'm really proud of you. You've done really well. Excellent comments. All of these comments that are down here are really positive comments. How do you feel? Are you proud of yourself? I, um, well, I've learned to work well, keep my head down, not getting distracted by other pupils. I'm learning to control my anger. Excellent. Brilliant. And that's really important as well, you know, that you've learnt now that it was other people who were distracting you from doing the work that you should be doing. And now you're getting your head down. That's going to be, prove really positive. When we take you for interviews in new schools, Liam, that's going to work really well. We do concentrate a lot on getting the, the pupils to recognise what's gone wrong so that we can try and avoid it happening again. Employment-wise, we do struggle in this area, so a lot of the families that I work with, it's generations of unemployment. You'll have um, the parents who are unemployed, the grandparents who are un unemployed. A lot of the areas that I do go to are actually um, in the process at the moment of being pulled down to make way for, for new builds. Uh, so there are obviously concerns in the, within the community of, of uh, areas where there's a lot of antisocial behaviour. We find out firstly what the child is interested in. Um, we look at pupils' interests, occupational areas of interest that they might want to do when they leave school. And we'll look around and work with um, training providers, if we can, to try and get the, the young people engaged in some positive activities. A lot of the pupils that we have don't cope very well in a classroom environment. They're much better when they're actually working, doing hands-on activities, practical type activities. Kerry's work with a number of local training agencies, such as Kilkenny, the Wee Motor Mission, aimed at developing young people's practical skills in a working environment, has produced a major breakthrough with many of the pupils. A lot of the pupils that we work with have very limited social skills and team building skills, and what we really need to do is to be able to get them to work together. Um, and one of the reasons that we use Call Kenny is it's away from the school environment. The pupils are actually doing hands-on practical activities. So they're learning, you know, the, the basics of practical mechanics, but from that they're also learning how to work with each other, um, how to interact, how to communicate effectively, and also how to act responsibly if you're expecting to be listened to. Used to on a car, used to on the engine. The young people are actually taught in a, a total different way to what you would maybe experience in a classroom environment. It's not something like we're your friends, but it's more that we're going to treat you as an adult and to be treated as an adult, you've got to respect us. One 
group will work on one side of the car, one group will work on the other side of the car. They're constantly doing different things. It isn't just about you stand here and watch me take a tire off. It's you get in there and get them tires off and you get your head under there and get in and get that engine out. They're being kept busy, they're being kept occupied and it seems to work really well. They really do need to do practical activities. They're not the kind of children who are going to succeed if they just sit reading things out of a book all the time. It's vitally important. You've got to I thought it was great, actually. I've always wanted to do some night art. And when I come, like Sam and Sandra, they were getting nice and the canny and if you didn't want to do something, they thought you couldn't do it. They wouldn't, like, force you into it. We found that a lot of our pupils, because they're so keen to go and do the practical mechanics, have actually worked really hard to make sure that they're in school on time, they're in school on the days they're supposed to be, and that their behaviours have improved. We get a lot of positive feedback from the, the pupils who have actually been on the, on the project. Um, a lot of things that they come back with is that they've enjoyed the fact they're not in, in school. They're in a garage and they're actually working away from the school environment. Just looking at the young people and actually getting them into school is job satisfaction, to be honest with you, because a lot of these pupils have had huge issues with attendance, and just getting them onto something like the practical mechanics course, seeing them at the end of the evening when they're getting their awards, and seeing the smiles on the face when they're beaming because they've achieved something, which for a lot of these pupils is the first time they've actually achieved something. To go on and reach their, their, their own potential, not somebody else's imposed, but their own. Um, Go on and enjoy life and be part of the community. Yay, well done. I always wanted to be a social worker because I want to help young kids and I want to help kids that have been through loads of trouble and that. Like some of my mates and that, I've been through it with them and it's upsetting and I want to help the back kids. I want to be with those children and I actually thoroughly enjoy being with the kind of staff that are attracted to pupil referral units because they're not typical teachers. Just for them to actually do the best they can and to realise that they do have potential. They're not, you know, society's rejects. They haven't been stuck here because they're a problem to get them out of the way. They're here to learn and to develop and to become useful members of society, hopefully. And that's what I would like for them. <laughs>